Hi everyone, today I want to discuss the gray zone of AI writing tools. And let me explain what I mean by that term. But first, let's categorize these AI tools. At least in my use, I categorize them as following. The first category includes tools like SciSpace, LitMaps, and Site, as you can see here, LitMaps, Site, SciSpace, and others. And these tools assist with literature reviews. And you can use these tools to find and analyze relevant research papers for your projects. The second category consists of tools where you can upload a PDF. You can do that with the size space. You can use the Cloud AI, for example. You can use Chat PDF for that. Uh, new startups offering similar functionality. And even Adobe Acrobat recently introduced an AI system for working with PDFs. Uh, in, on which tools? On these tools, you can basically upload your PDFs and interacting with your documents. Now let's talk about the gray zone of AI tools. The reason I call it that is because I cannot wholeheartedly recommend using these tools. While many students and researchers may be praising and using them, I strongly advise against it, as universities currently lack clear regulations surrounding AI uh, tool usage spe specifically. One tool, and I, actually there are many of them, and the, the, the most famous ones may be this undetectable AI and also Higgs AI uh, bypass, AI bypass uh, detector or humanizer. So these tools, uh, along with others, they claim that uh, they are humanizing AI generated text. So I tested undetect undetectable AI and also many other tools a few months ago and the results were so poor. So I, I never used them for my academic work, even not for my personal work, for blogging or, or so. And while these tools might be useful for tasks uh, like blogging, maybe it is useful in your case where you could use AI generated content as a starting point and then heavily edit it. I have issues with the term humanize here. Uh, these tools essentially introduce artificial spelling errors, like under, specifically undetectable. They are introducing artificially spelling, artificial spelling errors, strange spacing and other artificial flows into the text, so requiring later significant editing afterwards. So maybe they are humanizing in a way that they claim, but if, then you can copy this text to use another tool like originality, as you can see here. And this tool claims that originality AI can uh, detect 100% the AI generated text. So if you copy paste the text from uh, undetectable and used originality, maybe it says, no, it is not AI generated, it is human, but the text, the content of the text is so poor. So therefore I do not recommend anyone using these kind of tools that claim to humanize or detect AI generated text. Many people may be using them, but if you blindly rely on the output, you risk ruining your academic work. And the tools like Turnitin can easily identify AI written content and universities will likely adopt m even more powerful tools in the future. And according to AI tool creators uh, that I have spoken recently, there is currently no tool on the market that can perfectly humanize, I still don't like this term, or detect AI generated text with 100% accuracy. So whether you are a student or, a, or an evaluator, so I definitely do not recommend using these kind of tools that claim that they are humanizing or they are detecting, detecting AI generated text. So these are my thoughts on this gray zone, which I call, I call them the, the gray zone AI tools. And I would definitely love to hear your opinions and experiences with these tools. So today's tutorial is about this issue. I think this is one of the, the huge problems now we have with AI tools. And Please feel free to share your uh, opinions, your experience with me in the comments, or if you want, you can directly reach to me. And I think together we can learn more about this evolving landscape. So I have tutorials on the tools that I categorize as the first category, like SciSpace, LitMaps, Site AI. You can check them from my channel. You can like this video if you want. You can also subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Thank you.